Hi dear friends good evening I am Dr Mukesh Parikh and I welcome you all to my Institute English Cosmos and I am present with second sonnet of Shakespeare with its explanation those who have not seen the first uh, sonnet's explanation can browse my YouTube channel and can search there so here I start as you all know that these sonnets have been divided into three parts and in which the first part is called the procreation sonnets in which the poet is or so, uh, say the speaker in the poet poems these sonnets he is coaxing provoking and uh, requesting a sort of requesting to his uh, patron to marry and to beget children okay so uh, in shakespeare's age uh, age of 40 was considered you know quite an old age so the poem begins the sonnet begins when 40 winters shall besiege thy brow it means on thy thy eyebrow on your eyebrow when there will be an effect of your 40 years of age it means when you become old and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field face has been compared uh, metaphorically with the field and uh, time has been compared with a digging person one who has created trenches in beauty's field it means the writer is talking about wrinkles he says that on your beauty on your beauteous face on your beautiful face time will uh, create wrinkles so not very tough the two lines are the youth sprout thy youth sprout livery livery means clothes dress proud livery so here is a kind of personification of uh, dress that uh, the colorful youth of your beauty so gazed on now will be a tattered weed of small worth held so writer is comparing uh, you know it is something very important to notice that in almost all the sonnets or in dramas also wherever sonnets are present in the dramas as well shakespeare is known for creating different kinds of vocabulary like uh, in this poem i will not divert my attention towards other poems because uh, the moment i start teaching any poem you know there there comes so many references in my mind so in this poem the poet has created the vocabulary of field plowing the field weed uh, say crop clear so uh, and the time is the reaper okay in in some other poems also the writer has created the same kind of ima- imagery so he says that thy youth sprout livery so gazed on now if you uh, look at your beauty right now you will find that that proud beauty you earlier had is no more has been converted into a weed which is unwanted clear so will be tattered weed tattered mean to say torn from different places and might be the writer is talking about that uh, is comparing the uh, you know gaining age and the wrinkled faces with uh you know these kind of things where which are unwanted and they are uh, you know they prick someone like thorns that's why the writer has used tattered weeds of small worth held and there is no worth of you know your old age now now let us talk about the rhyme scheme of the poem you all know that shakespearean sonnet has a rhyme scheme many of you must be knowing a b a b c d c d e f e f and the couplet at the end g g okay meanwhile i you know explain the poem let me talk about that shakespeare is considered to be the creditor of giving english sonnet uh, you know england got sonnet in the petrarchan form uh, earl of surrey and uh, wyatt in the age of henry 8 they brought from italy the form of sonnet the 14 line form of you know uh writing a poem where there are uh, cert- certain times you know there are two parts the first part talks about the problem and the last uh, you know six uh, lines the first eight lines talk about some problem and the last six lines gives uh, give us some solution to that okay and where the writer changes its tone uh, and from problem to start going towards the solution is called volta clear so these first four lines it is called quatrain and shakespeare is credited with you know divided dividing you know these eight lines into four lines and four lines and then you know dividing his ideas into now when i was talking about the uh, rhyme scheme of this sonnet the it's quite typical if you see 
the first line's the last word is brow and then the second line's last word is field and then third line's last word is now and then fourth line's last word is health. Now field and health does not rhyme together but uh, it is said that at that time field must have been called felt and that's why it, it, the writer has written it with health. So I think you can understand that there had been a vowel shift altogether a vowel shift we call it those who does not uh, those who do not know about uh, uh, the concept of vowel shift can understand can in, in, on internet they can search it this is something very important a topic like in middle ages uh, you know from the Norman attack uh, the French attack Anglo-Saxon people you know uh, changed their tongue there, there came some shift in their consonants in the language but that consonant uh, or the consonants when they got changed is uh, altogether paradoxically called the vowel shift. Okay, so the way Shakespeare uh, used to speak a word was must not be spoken by the, the people of the age of uh, Chaucer. Clear. So there had been a complete shift. Uh, in the the way people used to speak words so today in modern english the way we pronounce from standard pronunciation field and health must be some other pronunciation at that time so this is a very small lecture on that kindly don't feel that you know i'm digressing i'm coming back to the poem then being asked where all thy beauty lies people will ask you uh, that now you are old so where is your beauty? This is a poem being addressed to the patron, one who is 40 years of age and must have not married. So the poet is uh, asking him uh, somehow through poem that you should marry now. So it's not homosexual attraction towards now is, you know, uh, as uh, I uh, made you study in the first sonnet. Here it is asking to uh, procreate. It means some heterosexual uh, union or it's a union the writer wants to have you know, for his uh, patron. So he says, then being asked, when you, to, you will be asked where all thy beauty lies, where has your beauty been gone? Where all the treasure of thy lusty days? Lusty days mean to say when you were young, when you could have procreated, when you could have, uh, you know, given birth to people, when you could have enjoyed your youth, where those treasured, uh, Treasured. Why the, the writer has used the word treasured? It means he has not spent it. It means he has not married and he did not uh, give his youth. Here again, you know, some erotic uh, imagery is there. You can all understand that in this euphemism, in this very soft language, the writer somehow is talking about like if you did not... Uh, uh, you know, uh, consummate your relationship, uh, sexual relationship with somebody. It means you uh, kept your beauty, your lusty days, your energy of youth with, within yourself. So people will ask you like if you did not spend on anybody, you did not marry, then where that youthful treasure is. So you will not have an answer. So look at the emergency uh, exige exigency in the poem where the writer is using such an imagery, such a language where somebody will be uh, really be motivated to marry clear so where all thy treasure of thy lusty days to say within thine own deep sunken eyes it means when people will ask you you will say that my beauty lies in my own sunken eyes you can see that the sunken eyes means uh, obviously the writer says that in the age of 40 though it seems very uh, you know uh, out of mode sometimes like you know a man of 40 cannot be uh, that much older like you know his eyes will be sunken so we can uh, take it as a kind of hyperbole a kind of you know exaggeration where the writer is might be for coaxing purposes asking his uh, patron to marry like you know uh, they say we have a song in I'm sorry I'm digressing and coming to some vernacular language that recently there had been certain reels like to mota kinna ho gaya so in the same way uh, that same language is there in this poem like you know to buddha kitna ho gaya how old you look and okay and people will ask you that where the treasure of your lusty days are so you will say that uh, this treasure lies in my own eyes so that will not be a correct answer you will feel ashamed the writer says the poet says uh, in the next line to say within thine own deep sunken eyes were an all eating shame and thriftless praise then you will feel ashamed of yourself that oh my god i did not marry i, I did not spend this beauty this these you know uh, praiseworthy uh, lusty uh, days on anybody and that's why i'm not getting praise for myself how much more praise deserved thy beauty's use had you married someone you could have 
uh, got praise for your beauty now here we get the idea that you know had you been a married person you could have beget certain children we got in certain children and those children will be uh, giving testimony to your beauty that you know you were beautiful and the same beauty will must have been visible in your children but 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 would have been visible in your children had you married clear so he says that what all uh, and all eating shame and thriftless praise how much more praise deserved thy beauty's use if thou couldest answer if you had the guts to answer if you have the courage if you have the embarrassment enough to answer the people you will say now the the answer poet has imagined starts with an inverted comma this fair child of mine shall sum my count and make my old excuse had you had a child of your own then if people uh, suppose people uh, had asked you like uh, where your beauty has been spent then you could have answered that look at my child this is the testimony of my beauty my youthful days and uh, I am old but you know you can see the same beauty same handsomeness in my child but now this answer has no value because you cannot uh, uh, respond this way because you did not marry clear so if thou couldest answer this fair child of mine, I'm repeating, shall sum my count and make my old ex excuse. Proving his beauty by succession thine, that child of yours would have proved your succession of beauty. The beauty you had earlier uh, would be uh, enjoyed by the people uh, in your child. This were to be new made when thou art old so when you becomes old so he's just like a, giving you know a friendly advice a fatherly advice that if you had married then your beauty which is withered now in your sunken eyes and on your wrinkled face uh, could have been enjoyed by uh, the people by the family members by you know their kith and kin in your child beautiful child and see thy blood warm when thou feelest it cold when you become cold in blood your energy uh, you know recedes then you can you know uh, feel that the same energy that same warmth of the blood can be seen can be felt in your child so friends you can understand that uh, the kind of uh, you know enjoyment i am taking in explaining these sonnets because uh, I find that uh, most of the students for net or other exams, they are totally devoid of, uh, uh, you know, detailed text analysis. What I personally believe that somebody who wants to become a professor of English should be in the habit of uh, reading at least one sonnet of Shakespeare daily or say certain good lines from Shakespearean drama, at least some pages from good novel, at least from postmodern novels, some classic novels like Jane Eyre or say Jane Austen's novels and at least some lines from you know some other uh, you know non-fictional book as well some essays of Bacon so all these will give you uh, a real taste and texture of you know English I would also suggest that uh, the students who really want to have uh, you know a worthy knowledge uh, treasure of knowledge should read Edison's essay. I keep, you know, telling all these things to my offline class students, online class students. And uh, uh, there has been a trend these days that, you know, um, people feel that, you know, getting tidbits from here and there will make them qualify this exam. So be assured now and be warned also from, you know, an experienced and seasoned teacher like me. I'm very proud of myself that, you know, I have been successfully teaching for last 25 years. And being not only teaching, I'm also studying. I have done PhD and, you know, I'm so proud of my PhD. Though I'm, I, I, I should have been more proud of my nets, so many nets. But instead of that, you know, I'm proud of my double MPhil, my two, two MPhils in linguistics and, uh, you know, this literature as well as my PhD. Because, you know, these things taught me how to do textual analysis, how to go in depth of, you know, the textual analysis. Because ultimately, the textual analysis will make also you be... Uh, you know, mnemonically, mnemonically means, you know, from memory point of view, a strong student and a strong student can become a strong teacher because ultimately you have to identify the figures of speeches, literary terms, uh, rhyme scheme. 
so uh, you can see that this poem is not as as tough you know as it is considered that you know shakespearean sonnets are very tough a very simple fatherly advice you can find in this poem where the poet is asking his patron his uh, young fellow you know that you should marry and you should have bigger bigger children though this advice might be uh, say quite uh, fruitful because 40 is not that much an old age though as i earlier told in the lecture that uh, you know he seems to be quite old but he is not because he can still marry and you know beget children so that's it for today's session thank you very much kindly keep writing comments and keep liking my videos i should have you know i i daily think like i would ask my viewers that if you are watching me come on you can like my videos you can share my videos is it important like ritualistically i ask and you know give a press button like you know subscribe to my channel share my videos i can see that you know students are because i have the data uh, that students are continuously watching my videos throughout the day i i i daily check it but i'm so depressed and uh, feel very ashamed of myself that you know people are people don't have students don't have that indebtedness in them you know that if they are watching me if they are learning something from me i think uh, you do you like like you your identity should not be disclosed come on nobody is going to disclose your identity if you are learning from someone i'm not asking for any money any fee this is a free service if i'm doing some free job for you at least you can you know share my videos <laughs> at least uh, you can do that you know i'm not uh, you know pleading with you right now i'm simply saying because sometimes i feel that you know where my 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 channel is and where you know the other people's channels are there when you know, they are only doing advertisements on their channels about their institutes i'm simply helping the students and still i'm so much lagging behind so it's a request come you know uh, an order from a teacher side that if you are watching me if you are fully watching my video if you are that much a sincere student i make an eye contact with all of you and you know feel compelled that you are going to share my video like my video and at least suggest 10 to 20 students around friend of yours you know so that you know my channel grow thank you very much friends uh, i read this poem from this uh, compendium ye aapko ulti dikhegi it will be inverted image but this complete works of william shakespeare i love this book friends thank you very much